everyone, and welcome to episode number 203 of the Karen Knits podcast. And I have officially boarded the chicken bandwagon. I will talk more about her, Olive, in a little bit. I, I have boarded the emotional chicken bandwagon. Emotional support chicken bandwagon. <laughs> and I love my wonky chicken. <laughs> anyway. Oh, you guys are in for a treat today. I'm in fine form. <laughs> oh boy. Anywho, it is Saturday, March the 16th, 2024. And I have no idea what parts of my regular intro I've said and not said. My name is Karen and I'm coming to you from South Central Pennsylvania, where I live, where I work, where I knit chickens, and <laughs> where I get into all kinds of other crafting shenanigans. I'm so happy to have you here with me today. If you're a new viewer, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here with me today. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back for another week to see what kind of shenanigans I've been up to. And as you can see, shenanigans have been happening. <laughs> so, I've had, I've got a lot of knitting done this week. It's, it's been a fun week. So anyway, first though, do we want to talk about the chicken first? Let's talk about the chicken first. I actually have two finished objects this week. I finished my round one sock madness socks. I walk the line and I started and finished all of my emotional support chicken. And she's as wonky as they get. Look at how wonky her head is. <laughs> her waddle's going east and her comb is going west. <laughs> She's wonky. I love her. I'm trying to straighten out her poor little head. <laughs> this chicken has brought me so much joy, as you can tell. Anyway, <laughs> the emotional support chicken. This is a pattern by Annette Cors Corsino. Corsino. Not sure how that's pronounced. Everybody and their dog has been knitting emotional support chickens lately. And I got on the bandwagon, the chicken wagon, whatever. I broke down and I made myself an emotional support chicken. Look at that little face. I think even her eyes are crooked. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at her. Yeah, her eyes are crooked. <laughs> oh dear. She's just so cute. She's big. She used a little bit over almost, sorry, almost 500 grams of yarn. I stuffed her with, I had a whole metal container full of just the yarn tails. I kept them for, I have no idea why. I've been keeping a bunch of them. So I've stuffed that with stuffed her with some of the or with all of those and I also went through and in my yarn stash I've got all kinds of random leftovers it's beautiful weather outside there's lots of motorcycles it might be a noisy one in the background today and I apologize can't control it anyway so I have all these different partial skeins of all this random yarn that I've, I've kept 40 grams here, 27 grams there, five grams. I have no idea why I would keep just five grams of some yarn that I'll never use for anything else. So I just un, unballed it up and stuffed her. She's a little white stretch down her backside. She's just so cute, wonky and adorable. I didn't have yellow to do her beak, that's fine. So the yarn I used for her, I used three kinds of yarn all together on the outside. The main color and the contrast color and her belly are done in lion and her beak 
are done in Lion Brand Vanna's Choice. This color is Olive, which is where her name comes from. So I decided Olive is a perfect name for her. And this off-white color is Linen. So those are the two main the two main colors that she's made out of. I used the entire skein of the 100 gram skein of olive the olive color. I had just a few grams left over and I used that to, I just I stuffed that, it, it, it's inside her. The stuffing didn't get all the way to the point here. I'm gonna have to fix that. Anywho, I just finished her this afternoon. I'm filming this about 3.30 in the afternoon. It's a bit later than I like to film. Although I seem to film this late quite often. Anywho, I just finished her this afternoon. I started her on the 12th of March on Tuesday and I finished her on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, the 12th was Tuesday. 12th? Yeah, started her on Tuesday. The, her, the wattle and comb are done using, I had some of my own hand dyed yarn here. I had some leftovers of this orangey color. This is a sport weight yarn, so what I did was I held it double to have it a little bit thicker and heavier for doing the comb and the wattle. And I ordered some, I wish I got the two-tone eyeballs they're the safety eyes I would have I should have I wish I got the two-tone ones but little beady black eyes are fine for my little chicken they're just not as noticeable on on this little bit darker color body but isn't she adorable see the waddle the waddles aim in one way the combs aim Oh, poor little wonky girl. I love her. Anywho, so let's have her sit here and watch and supervise what's going on today. Oops, come back in shot. There you go, pretty girl. Pretty little wonky girl. Oops. Okay, I'll quit horsing around with the chicken now. <laughs> anyway, so that is my emotional support chicken. I have a hunch I will make more. It was a quick knit and it was a fun knit. I enjoyed making her. I have a 100 gram skein of yarn. It's a worsted weight yarn that um, I got. It was an extra skein that came with some yarn that I ordered from Knit Picks. And it's some kind of tweed and the color is caramel. And it's a gorgeous honey, it's, it's a caramel color with little tweedy bits in it. And I think that'll make a perfect body color, like the body for another chicken. And spoiler alert, her name will probably be caramel. This one is olive, because that's the color of the yarn. The other one will be named, if I make a second one, will be named caramel. And then I also would like to make one that's a little bit smaller using leftover um, all kinds of leftover sport weight yarn. So I have a bunch of these these uh, yarns that I dyed myself in sport weight. I've got leftovers from when I made my penguono a little while back. And I'd like to make one, and that one I might call her kaleidoscope because it'll just be a kaleidoscope of all kinds of colors. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. I might end up with a whole flock of chickens. Do you call a bunch of chickens a flock? I think so. Anyway, enough about my cute little wonky chicken. My other finished object are my Sock Madness Round 1. So these are, the pattern is called I Walk the Line, and it's a pattern by Shu Yi Wu, or her other name she goes by on Ravelry is Cal from Mars. And these are the round one socks. I cast them on March 2nd, finished them on March 10th. 
I was either the 18th or 19th person to finish on my team. I'm on team B in Sock Madness this year. Mine were either, when I went to bed, I, I submitted them Sunday night about 10 o'clock. I waited for a while, but I, I had to get to bed because I had to get to work the next day. When I went to bed, there were 17 people finished on my team. When I got up in the morning, I had my email that my socks were okay, they were approved, and that I was going on to round two. And at that point when I checked, there were 19 people finished. So I either finished in spot 18 or 19 on my team. I don't know which one it was because the two, the number went up by two overnight while I was snoozing. So, I like these socks. The yarn I used for this is yarn I dyed myself. Um, it's kind of a brownish color and it's almost like a minty green kind of color. And it's a neat... I like the, the 3D kind of effect with the way the yarn is. Or not the yarn, the way the, the design is. So it has alternating with one column the brown is has a pearl a few pearl rounds and in the other it's the opposite side of the chevron it's the green that has the uh, the chevron uh it's a regular heel flap uh heel turn gusset gusset decreasing very pretty i still have to tuck in my ends i might do that this evening I think I might do that when Hubby and I are watching TV tonight. So those are my Sock Madness 18 round two socks, or round one socks, sorry. And I have, I have advanced to round two. And the round two socks, the pattern is going to drop probably any time within the next maybe 45 hours, the, or from when I'm filming this the the round finished late this morning early afternoon i forget i don't know exactly what time it was that it finished i don't recall i i'd have to double check whether all the spots were filled or if the full two week time window finished before everyone was done but round one is closed complete finished and the specs have already come out for round two and the round two pattern calls for a hundred or just under a hundred grams of one color yarn either a solid or a tonal so i will be using maybe not that one because i threw it on the floor come back here I will be using one of these colors that I dyed for Sock Madness. I might opt for one of these two because they're quite similar. I might take the, the palest pink and then I have these other colors which are nice and contrasty for if we have to, if we need other socks that are going to require two colors that are contrasty. These two I like together, and these two I like together. Those would work for color work tight or two color socks coming up. But we shall see. I will not decide 100% until I see the pattern. Whether it would look better with a darker color, whether it would look better with a lightish color, whether it'll look the best with white or a bear color. A bear color? Those two set, those two words don't go together. <laughs> but you, you understand what I mean. It might look best if it's a heavily cabled pattern. Sometimes using a bear yarn, in my opinion, looks the nicest because you could just focus on the design. It might be lace, it might be cables, who knows? But it's a single one color which I'm excited for. So I'm patiently, not patiently, 
<laughs> it's kind of like the sorry not sorry thing. I am impatiently waiting for the new pattern to drop. I hope it comes out. Oh, it doesn't much matter. I'm, I'm free the rest of today other than doing the editing on this and the hubby and I are going to go out and grab a bite to eat for supper. I'm busy all tomorrow morning. We have church and then out for lunch with a few people afterwards. We typically don't get, uh, we're gone from home eight something in the morning, between eight and eight thirty in the morning. We don't usually get home till one thirty or two thirty in the afternoon. And by then I'm just, I'm pooped. <laughs> It's always a long busy morning on Sundays for us so I might and then I also have school things to get done on Sunday afternoons early evening as well so that I'm ready for work Monday morning and then Monday I'm back I'm, I'm at work all day so I don't have a ton of spare time but when Sock Madness rolls around I make the time I, I just I make the time simple as that so we shall see when the pattern when the pattern does come out I'm hoping soon I'd love it to come out today so that I can work on it this afternoon and evening but we shall see we shall see any which way it it'll get here when it gets here but the the specs came out around lunchtime give or take Eastern time in the US so once the specs come out the pattern can come out anytime within the next 48 hours so we're a little less than 48 hours since the specs have dropped now so it could be a little bit or it's probably closer to 45 hours now before it has to come out by lunchtime Monday that, that's that's what I'm trying to say. The pattern will be out at the latest by lunchtime, my time zone on Monday. So those are my finished objects. And I also have one work in progress that has seen a little bit of progress. I probably should have done a little bit more on that so I could have finished it instead of knitting a chicken. But I love my chicken. I love my wonky chicken. So these are my two at a time toe up sort of shorty socks and since I saw you last I was at the cat marker on the the foot on the pair of the or on both of them since then I finished the gusset increasing on both and I've done the heel turn and I'm almost done the heel flap on the first sock once this one is done, then I will move over and I will get the heel turn and heel flap done on sock number two. And then I'll get moving up the leg, which won't take long at all. The yarn I'm using for this is the leftover yarn from my Chickadee Fiber Arts advent calendar from this past year, from 2023. And... I made one pair of sort of shorty socks out of the leftovers, the first half of the leftovers. I used most of the yarn I used to make my Ariana cardigan and the leftovers days 1 through 12 I put those into one pair of sort of shorty socks and days 13 through 24 are going into a second pair of sort of shorty socks. So I will use up every inch of that advent calendar, which is, I'm happy for. So that's my progress on my one work in progress. I have not touched my mitered square cardigan this week, chicken. And I also have not done any work on the, I'm drawing a blank what it's called. The stripes. I can't remember the name of it. Absent-minded professor moment here, guys. I'm sorry. What is that called? You guys are probably telling to tell you you you're saying to the screen what it's called. I 
need to have that little icon where the computer loading symbol goes on here. Anyway, the pattern with stripes in it. That's gonna drive me bonkers. Anyway, I might just blurt out the phrase in a little bit when I remember it, but for now, it's gone. So anyway, I haven't worked on either of the cardigans this week. I've only worked on, I finished my round one socks. I started and finished a chicken and I got a little bit, a, a, a nice amount of work done on my scrappy two at a time socks. So I'm happy with all the progress I made this week. And I might make a, I might start another chicken. We shall see. We sh I, I probably won't start her right away because we have um, the next round of sock madness coming out soon. So that's it for my crafting progress this week. Also this past week, it's been busy with work as always. And I think I mentioned last week I had an appointment to see a hematologist on Tuesday. So this past Tuesday I went to see a hematologist. My doctor has been wanting, to me, wanting me to get a second opinion on some of my red blood cell numbers in my blood work. Over the last several years he's noticed that my red blood cell count and the hematocrit numbers are they're above normal and they've been creeping up each time I get blood work done. So he sent me to get a second opinion on whether this is something that might be uh, a health concern or if this is just my normal. I always have high hemoglobin, so that, that is my normal. But the red blood cell count, I'm not as sure on that. I have found my medical records from when we lived in Maine. So between, I think I've got records from 2008, 2009 with some of the lab work. So I do have numbers for those at that point. The red blood cell count was within the normal range, but it was at the upper end of the normal range at that time. I'm also going to, to check where we used to live in Middletown, Maine, or no, Middletown, Pennsylvania. We used to live in before we moved down here when I switched to a different um, campus within my university um, system. We lived up there from 2012 to 2017 and we are going to be up in Middletown next week because we want to go and see our accountant to get our taxes done. So we will be up in Middletown next week so what I want to do is go to the medical office and get copies of my, um, my lab work and medical records from when I went there. And then that way I can take all of that. I go back to see the hematologist on the 9th of April. She also had me come in on Wednesday for, for more blood work, for fasting blood work. They took seven vials of blood, <laughs> they took a lot. But she wanted to test for more detailed blood tests on um, the red blood cell count and all the other things in your blood, um, iron counts, all that kind of stuff. And she also wanted to run some tests to rule out any kind of weird blood cancer. She was very, she thought it was very unlikely, highly, highly unlikely that it would be any type of blood cancer because <coughs> I've had this, this has been ongoing for years. So she's, she doesn't think, she said, cancers don't sit there and do not much. They don't stay minor for years. So she really doesn't think that's that, but just to rule out that, she did blood tests for that as well. So I will get, I have the results, I don't understand them, but I have the results and I will see her on the 9th of, um, the 9th of April and we'll talk about it some more. I think she views me as an interesting mystery to figure out what's going on. Because in general I'm, I'm healthy. I don't feel fatigued, I don't feel any of the issues running through like do you have these symptoms, those symptoms, the other symptoms. Nope, 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 nope. So it could be some kind of deficiency I have or it, um, it just could be my normal. It could be some other underlying problem 
like sleep apnea or something like that where I'm not getting I'm not getting enough oxygen into my blood and therefore my body is producing more red blood cells that might be what it is so she's going to dig deeper and figure out what what's what she doesn't seem really concerned or worried about what's what where clearly if she doesn't need to see me for four weeks again it's not something that's super urgent to to get done so that's the update on on that and otherwise not much else is news around here i'm going to impatiently wait for the next round of sock madness to start i will the rest of today i'm going to spend some time working on my two at a time toe up socks and hopefully get those it'd be nice if i could get those done before the next round of sock madness starts but then maybe I'll get some more squares added to my mitered square cardigan. Jelly roll. That's <laughs> the jelly roll cardigan. That's the other pattern. I kept thinking a 10, um, 10, or no, log cabin. I was thinking, no, but that goes around. Jelly roll. That's got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Phew. That feel, I feel better now. Anyway, so I maybe I'll start adding a couple more squares onto my mitered square, the coziest memory uh, cardigan. But I think I'll work on my socks because that's nice and well. They're both they're, all my other projects I've got on the needles right now are all nice mindless projects. But the socks are closest to being done. I kind of would like to get those done. Then I can cast on another pair of sort of shorty socks so I have a palette cleanser between sock madness rounds to work on yeah that's the plan alrighty so I don't think I know anything else that I need to tell you about or want to tell you about I have a chicken I love my chicken as wonky as she is so again Olive will probably be sitting here and joining us for podcasts in the future kind of peeking into the background to keep keeping keep tabs on what i'm doing maybe if i make another chicken it won't be quite as wonky as this one is oh and for her i use the four and a half millimeter us7 uh, if i do one in sport weight i'll go down a needle size or two just to keep the um the gauge fairly tight so that the stuffing doesn't peek out and I have more scrap yarn that I can use for stuffing on a second chicken so I suspect there will be a second chicken in the future not right away but in the future there probably will be another chicken and I've been doing some diamond art painting this week too so already I'll zip it and let you go and there's a motorcycle and I, I'll zip it, I'll let you go, and I will see you again next week. Alrighty, take care everyone, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.